Okay, dear students, this is Mustafa Ahmed Merchawala, your SBR trainer. Uh, today is the orientation of SBR. And before we move on, first let me show you some of the our high achievers, position holders, just for your motivation. See, over the period, these all are our position holder. They are like 17 positions in one in this screen you can see. And there are many other students, those they scored many, many students like in 70s, 75, 80s. And with respect to time, I share these results if you are active on LinkedIn, social media. So you can see that, right? So this is just for your motivation. When these students can do this, you guys can also do that. They also followed the same path which you are going to follow, right? Okay. So it's not a difficult paper. It's like it has a very good pass rate. When you come to the strategic level, which we call ACCA part three as well. So in a strategic level, SBR has got the highest pass rate. And one more thing, whenever any students join strategic level. So normally students opt SBR as a first paper. There are many reasons. First of all, it has a very good pass rate. Global pass rate is very good. So the chance of passing is high if you opt this paper. Second reason is, it is connected to FR paper. The previous skills module paper is FR. So those who are coming from the complete ACCA route, ACCA route. So for them, it's a connected paper with F7 or FR, right? So they, get, they can easily get help from that paper as well. And the third reason is this paper contains IES, IFRS. And normally all, all employers, they require IES, IFRS knowledge, right? So that's why this paper is very useful. Now, what services we provide in this paper? First of all, as you all know, although these all things are uh, already discussed with you during the counseling, during our admin team members, or if you have contacted me, we always inform you about all these things. So these are the services we provide. The first thing is we will provide you detailed recorded lectures which contains everything like theory, practical, everything, right? Then secondly, we provide revision days, the most important area of the course, the past papers, revision days, detailed re revision days with all almost latest past papers. Then we have a query support department, although my teaching style is like, I start things from scratch, very scratch level. And then also I repeat things multiple times. So it's very easily understandable. But still, if you have any problems sometime, you can ask, right? We have a query supportive department. Then we conduct the mock exams every every quarter, every, every at the end of the year, every session, we conduct the mock exam. And we not only we conduct it, we mark them also. And finally, the marking in the most important facility most important facility is this marking facility what is marking facility as you guys know that sbr strategic business reporting is a paper with almost 80 percent theory so normally in past students didn't know that what they are writing so this was one of the reason of failure so now since many years we are providing this service you can send your past papers also at, through a, through an email, email we provide you on WhatsApp. And in that email, you can attach the question as well as the solution typed by you. So we give proper feedback to you and you can gradually improve, okay? So with the help of all these services, you can easily clear if you follow, if you follow the instruction, you can easily clear this paper, right? Okay, now, this is the paper format. This is SBR paper format. As we all know, it's a 100 marks paper. And in ACCA, there is no choice, right? I have written the global pass rate. The average global pass rate is a, of this paper is like 50 to 55%. This is global pass rate written on ACCA global website as well, right? Okay, so it's 50 to 55%. This is the ACCA international pass rate, okay? But when you, but when you, if I see my own pass, pass rate because ACCA team send us the pass rate as well. So normally my pass rate is around 75 to 80%, which is very, very good, which is excellent. Okay. So there is a high chance of passing if you follow the instruction. Now, this is the paper format. You have in the first section, which is called section A. In section A, there are two questions like question number one is consolidation plus IES, IFRS. 
and question number two is ethics plus ISIFRS, right? So like, just think like in F7, F7 level, you guys have a pure consolidation question, but here consolidation comes question comes with certain technical discussion of IAS and IFRS as well, right? So section eight total combined value is 50 marks. Now it's the wish of examiner he can break this 50 marks in any order. Like examiner can break this 50 marks in 30, 20, 28, 22, 25, 25. Normally, normally the weightage of consolidation question number one is high. Normally it's 30 marks and question number two is 20. Or sometimes question number one is 28 and question number two is 22 marks. It's like that. Okay. Right. Then in section B, you get IES, IFRS with management commentary. IAS IFRS with management commentary or like a practical paper. I've written the word management commentary, but there are other topics as well. And in question number four, again, you get IAS IFRS plus some other topics. And normally question number three and four are theoretical discussion, theoretical, technical, real life cases, real life cases discussion. Okay. Now, not a paper I have written here. 80-85% theory already I have told you. It's not a paper of number crunching. It's not a paper of number crunching like your basic papers. See, there is, there was a time when you were in foundation level. It was all operational. Then you joined applied skills module. This was a little big, bigger level, like managerial level. And now you are in a strategic level. So strategic level is like boardroom. Okay. So now you don't need to do petty things. They won't ask you to do petty calculations, right? So this is not a paper of number crunching and you know, this is the time of software. So normally the number crunching is done by software. Everything or everything is done by software. Now it's the time of AI artificial intelligence, right? Okay. Now, even there is no need of human now, no need of human. It's a separate topic and even we can discuss it a lot. You all know then. It is about communicating business performance. Now listen, re always remember that the, we accountants, we accountant, financial accountants are like communicators. We are communicators. Listen, there are two major departments. One is the front end department. One is there is a department who takes decision where to invest, which product to launch, from where to take the loan from how to generate the source of finance, which source of finance is good, equity finance is good or debt finance is good. So there is a front end department which takes decision. Now, once the front front department, front end department has taken the decision, now it's time to record these transactions. So this these transactions are recorded by back end department. Now, the back the duty of back end department is to record these transactions according to IES, IFRS and report to the external world. Report to the external world. So we are in the reporting department. We are at the back end. Okay. So once the decisions have been taken, we have to record it according to IFRS and we have to report it to the external world. So that means we are also very important people. So the external world comes to know about the performance of company through us. External world comes to know about the performance of company through us. So my dear students, in simple words, we are communicators. Okay. We are communicating the performance of business to the, to the investors. So always remember this thing that accountants are communicators. See, it's about communicating business performance to investors, explaining business model to investors. Uh, I would like to highlight one thing. Normally, since they launched the SBR format, Normally, it is the practice of examiner. They normally ask a question for investors. Like, you know, the, there are some technical areas in financial statement like defer tax, financial instruments. So a common investor can't understand these technical areas. So we have normally examiner asks such questions that communicate the performance, communicate the performance to investors. So Normally, this question comes with respect to investor aspect that you have to guide the business model of to the investors that how how this business is working, how this business is working, right? Okay. 
one more area normally comes and that is current issue current issue may come in any question but not a complete question on current issue now years back when there was an old paper of p2 the previous name of this paper years back was p2 in p2 there was there used to be a 25 marks current issue what is current issue normally you know the accounting standards are prepared by human beings they are human beings in international accounting standard board the guys who are working are human beings and human beings can do errors and there are limitations so if there is a defect in any is and ifrs so people criticize people do criticism on that standard and with respect to time standard board launch a new standard so just think if in the current time if if, if in the current time there are there are any restrict any criticism on existing standard this may be asked in your exam okay and if there is a new standard about to come they may ask you about that as well but normally normally i would say and this is the history of our acca that normally current issue comes from articles technical articles there are many technical articles written by examination team so it is highly highly recommended it is highly highly recommended to read the technical articles even i sometimes say to my students to watch to read at least give two days to technical articles in the end they are very very important normally current issues come from that and now in this latest sbr format current issue normally comes with 8 to 10 marks 8 to 10 marks i have also conducted many classes on current issues and we recently in routine we update the current issue things okay right so current issue may come in any question it's like 8 to 10 marks now or one more thing sometimes you can't even recognize the current issue you can't even recognize the current issue it's such a general discussion right now there is a change in recent years about question number one in question number one of sbr previously in old SBR, I'm not talking about P2. In old SBR, question number one, like consolidation question was also theory based. And you need to discuss why is this happening? Like you have calculated the goodwill. So examiner will ask how and why goodwill is calculated. Examiner may ask the non-controlling interest. Examiner may ask the P2S sale discussion. Examiner may ask the meaning of URP, the discussion on URP. So in see this, in question number one, now it, its format has changed. In previous SBR, look at the screen, question number one, students just need to discuss why it's happening. But in practical life, now, now look, come to the practical life. In practical life, normally we use a spreadsheet. All accounting is done on software, right? So what happens in real life, those who are working, those who are doing job, they know this. What happens in real life Look at here. Normally, at the year end, you need to pass some adjustments. Like, for example, there is a defer tax adjustment. There is an accounting for associate adjustment. Like, there is some depreciation adjustment. So, few things are there which are not adjusted already. So, now, in the new exam, you will be given a pre already ready-made income statement the examiner will give you in the solution in the solution sheet they will ready-made give you an income statement or sofp or cash flow but few things are missing few adjustments are missing so you need to adjust you need to adjust those things you need to adjust those things you need to adjust those things right okay you need to adjust those things and then you need to prepare a new income statement, adjusted income statement. So it's like more easy thing, more easier, more num a, a slight decline towards number crunching like 10 to 14 marks. See, it's may come 10 to 14 marks. So it's a good change. It's a good change basically, right? Okay, now. Now, what is the consolidation area? What is the consolidation area? Because normally in strategic level you guys you are you guys are normally from two backgrounds there are many students they join the strategy as this paper after doing routine acca they have that means they have done a f7 and there is a majority there is 
there is one more uh, population which comes from university. Like they get exemption of nine papers and then they join ECC. This is also routine. So let me tell you for both. So the basic is same. The basic is same. It's locked all like FR level, how to calculate goodwill, how to calculate NCI, the two methods of consolidation. Although I'm not teaching right now, I'm just giving you a discussion, okay? We are not, it's just orientation class. So what is P2S sale? What is S2P sale? This all basics, what you have done in F7, it's also part of here. Even I will also teach in the class, okay? Don't worry, we, we go up with the scratch things. Then there is a topic which we called step acquisition. What is step acquisition? Step acquisition means slowly and gradually buying the company. Previously, my dear student, when you guys were studying, previously, we used to acquire a company in one shot. Like in one shot, we used to buy 80% shares. So in one click, we used to get the control. But now, what will happen? Listen, first of all, we'll buy 10% shares of a company. 10% means 10% means we don't have any control or we don't have any significant influence. No control, no significant influence. So 10% investment is called trade investment. When you have a 10% or 5% investment, that means you don't have any control of that company, nor you have, nor you have any significant influence. So now the first case, you already had 10% shares. Now you bought 20% more shares. So you get 30%. So 30% means now you got the significant influence. So this organization became a, an associate for you. So previously you had 10%, now you have 30%. So this, this, this shift is called trade investment to associate shift. Trade investment to associate shift. This is part of our course. Then second case, now you already had 10% shares. You already had 10% shares. And now you got, now you got 60% shares. Now you got 60% shares, 50% more shares. So from 10 to 60, 10 to 60, that means you cross the border. You cross the border of 50%. That means previously this company was just a trade investment for you, but now it is a subsidiary for you. But now this company is a subsidiary for you. You got the control. Now the third case. You had 30% shares of a company. 30% means you have you have significant influence of that company. That means right now you already have significant influence. This company is associate for you. And now you got 40% more shares. So 40% more shares means now you are at 70%. So from 30% to 70% means you got the control. From 30 to 70% means you got the control. So this, call, this case is called A2S. This case, my dear student, is called A to S. Okay. Then you have. Now, this is a very interesting case and the examiner's favorite case. This case is called 60 to 80. 60 to 80 percent. 60 to 80 percent. Okay. 60 to 80 percent means 60 percent means 60 percent means you already had the control means this organization was already under your control. And now you bought 20% more shares. So still it's in your control. So this, this case is called S to S, like sub to sub. Previously you had the control and after buying 20% more shares, still you have the control. So no change in status, no change in control status. Only the holding percentages are changed. Okay. So this is a very interesting case. Obviously when we will be doing it, we'll discuss it. Don't worry. Now, one more area and which is called disposal. I would say disposal is the opposite of step acquisition. This is a step acquisition means we are moving forward. We are buying more shares. We are going forward. And now disposal means we are going backward. Hope you remember those who are coming from F7 or FR background. They know there is only this first case. This first case is there in F7. This first case is there in F7. And this is called full disposal, one shot disposal. Like you had, see this, you had 80% shares of a company and you, you sold it in one shot. So like 80 to zero, 80 to zero means you sold your control. You sold your control in one go. Now, 
the second case you had previously 80% shares you had previously 80% shares and now you came to 30% you had previously 80% shares and now you came down to 30% means you sold 50% shares so this is called S2A previously you had 80% shares man, means you had control. Now you sold 50% shares. You just have only 30% shares. That means now you just have significant influence. So again, in this second case, you lost your control. You sold your control. Now, third case, you had 80% shares and you sold 70%. So you came to trade investment. 10% is for trade investment. Again, this in this third case, you lost your control. So in the one, two, three, in the all first three cases, you sold your control. This is the key. Now, in this case, you already had 30% and you sold 20%. You already had 30% and you sold 20%. So that means 30 to 10, 30 to 10. That means previously you had significant influence, but now you sold your significant influence. You only have trade investment. So. And the final case, the once again, the favorite case of examiner is sub to sub. See, this case and this case, opposite, clearly opposite. Now, in the last case, you already had 80% shares and you sold 20%. So you just shifted from 80 to 60, 80 to 60, 80 to 60. Okay, so it's, it's basically 20%. It's basically no change in control. And this case is also called sub to sub this case is also called sub to sub okay now one more area which is consolidated as we not difficult area this area is not a difficult area consolidated as you have done in basics all all although we'll also cover some questions for this as well. It's income statement SOCI, right? Okay. And we all know that SOFP is always as at and income statement is also for the, always for the year, right? Then one more very interesting area, which is consolidated cash flow. One more very, very interesting area, which is consolidated cash flow. Now, wait. Whenever your teacher taught you, you, you guys already have studied consolidation in your life up to some extent. So when you studied consolidation for the very first time, your teacher must have told you that in consolidation, the whole group is a single entity. The whole group, the complete group is treated as a single entity. The complete group is treated as a single entity. So now for the purpose of cash flow point of view, you have to consider it as a single entity in consolidated cash flow or we call it group cash flow. You treat the whole group for from from cash flow point of view as a single entity. Now let me prove my this statement with some examples. Listen. For example, parent company has seventy percent shares in S company. That means NCI has got thirty percent shares. NCI has got thirty percent shares. Now listen, S company today, today S company gave dividend of ten thousand total total. Ordinary dividend today, S company paid total ordinary dividend of 10,000. You all know, we all know that ordinary dividends are always given to or ordinary shareholders. Ordinary dividends are always given to ordinary shareholders in their respective holding percentage. So see the owners, see the owners of S company. 70% owner is parent company and 30% is NCI. 70% owner is parent company and 30% NCI. So automatically out of this 10,000, 70% means 7,000 will go to parent company and 3,000 will go to NCI people. Okay. Now use your brain, which cash flow is a real cash flow in this whole scenario with respect to group, which cash flow is a real cash flow with respect to group. Listen, this 7,000 is just going inside, going inside the group. This 7,000 is going from one pocket to another within the group. So from the group point of view, from the group point of view, this 7,000 is not a cash flow. Yes, only this 3,000 is going out of the group. Only this 3,000 is going out of the group. So this is only a real cash flow from group. So now when we'll prepare the consolidated cash flow, 
only 3000 is the real cash flow only 3000 is the real cash flow okay please check it out Okay, now one very interesting. See how SBR paper works. Let me give you a real example now. This concept was, is in your SBR book as well. And this is taught by all the teachers. So before the exams, we trained this issue. We taught this dividend issue to students, you know, but once in past, they tested this concept in a different way. They tested the examiner, tested this concept in a different way. Listen to me. You know what is right issue? Right issue. Definitely you know this. Right issue is a cash issue by any company to existing shareholders. Existing. Okay. So now in the question it was written. This is the same holding, right? 70-30. That S company did a right issue. S company did a right issue. And through right issue, S company generated $5 million. Through right issue, S company generated $5 million and it was a fully, it was a fully subscribed right issue. It was a fully subscribed right issue. Okay. Now you tell me, right issue means obviously S company generated this cash from existing shareholders. Now, where are the existing shareholders? These are the existing P company and NCI. P company and NCI. So that means out of this 5 million, 70% came, 75 million times 70% is 3.5 million. 3.5 million came from P company and 1.5 million, 5 million times 30% is 1.5 million from NCI. Now you tell me out of this total 5 million, which is the real cash flow from group point of view, which is the real cash flow from group point of view. The only real cash flow is this 1.5 million. The other 3.5 million is going inside the group within the group. This is the movement within the group. This is not a real cash flow from group point of view. So that's why we'll only take when we'll prepare group consolidated cash flow. In this case, we'll only take 1.5 million cash flow from the group point of view. This is the game, right? I hope you got it. Okay. One more very interesting, one more very interesting example. Listen. Every time in consolidated cash flow, every time you need to think, every time you need to think about the group, every, each and every cash flow is only taken if they are relevant with respect to group. Now listen to this example. Example of buying a subsidiary. For example, at the beginning of the year, see this is accounting period. At the beginning of the year, parent company has two, had two subsidiaries, S1 and S2. Parent company had two subsidiaries S1 and S2 and during the year parent company bought a running business of S3 that means during the year parent company acquired this new subsidiary parent company acquired this new subsidiary S3 now listen listen you know whenever we buy a running business buying a subsidiary means buying a running business whenever we buy a running business we pay the consideration so for example we bought this running business for 50 million dollars we bought this running business for 50 million dollars like means we paid 50 million dollars we paid 50 million dollars to the existing owners of s subsidiary 3 right now but the issue is we paid parent companies paid 50 million dollars but in return he parent company got the whole subsidiary in return parent company got the whole subsidiary listen 
and when parent company got the whole subsidiary the whole running business there was 5 million cash present in that subsidiary there was 5 million cash present in that subsidiary so now use technical use your brain you just paid 50 million and in return you got a running business and in that running business there is a 5 million cash and that subsidiary will join parent company you remember adding together so that means in reality the net outflow is only 45 million the net outflow is only 45 million from the group point of view from the group point of view use your brain wait let me show you can you see this tissue paper box let us say uh, this box is sub is the running business i bought this box for 50 rupees i bought this box for 50 rupees and when i opened this box i got a five five rupee note i repeat i bought this box for 50 dollars and when I opened it, I got a $5 note, right? Okay, I got a $5 bill inside this. So that means the real cost of this box for me is $45. Getting? So such interesting areas are there in consolidated cash flow. I hope you got it. Take your time. Now, one more thing in consolidation and that is consolidation, consolidated foreign subsidiary. Previously, when you guys were young, you, in your previous studies, you just studied this area that the parent and subsidiary is in the same country and they have the same currency. Like the balance sheet or SOFP of parent company is in dollars and the balance sheet or SOFP of subsidiary also in dollars. So it's very easy to add, add it up. But now, you know, in global trades, there are many companies, they have parent company in one country and the subsidiary in another country. This is very common. This is very common. Like in United States, there are many businesses, they have subsidiaries in other countries. So now what will happen? Let us say parent company's financial statement is in dollars and the subsidiary's company's financial statement is in pounds or euros or rupees or yuan any currency right so in that case how to do how to add how to add horse and donkey it's very difficult so there is a complete procedure it's a very detailed and very interesting area so this is the part of your course as well obviously we can't discuss right now now seventh area is consolidation theory which is ifrs 10 and ifrs 3 the definition of control the cases in which there are sometimes you have less than 50 percent ownership and still you get the control such type of all cases are part of that right okay now next we have one new area which is which we called it additional performance measurement apm additional performance measurement apm this is one of the area apm okay what is this area see a new area in the previously not in p2 paper the old very old paper of p2 this uh, this area was not part but now it's the part what is the introduction of this area listen you know in a standard financial statement, when you invest in any, any company, they give you a financial statement. So in the standard financial statement, there are some standard ratios which you have studied in your basics like return, return on capital employed, GP margin, NP margin, EPS and all. But you know, those ratios are not enough for each and every company performance. Each and every company has a different business models, different KPIs, different performance indicators. So these standard ratios are not fit for everybody just think over it i give you one example there is a company which is totally dependent on employees 
that means employees are the heart of that company and in that company if there is a high labor turnover that means there is this is very dangerous this is very dangerous for that company and this information is very sensitive information and this information must be reported to shareholders so now this company will select some new ratios by his own own like this company will make a ratio of labor turnover labor turnover they will every year they will report labor turnover in their financial statement so now this is what we call additional performance measurement now that means you will go beyond the boundaries of ifrs and you will make your own you will make your own ratios you will select your own ratios and then you will report but of definitely when you cross the boundaries of ifrs and ias and you make your own ratios so definitely there is a big chance of corruption there is a big chance of corruption that's why this area is discussed in detail and this is now very common in like europe and uk side i have many friends and students in europe side they say it is applied in every company now but yes in like pakistan bangladesh and these countries normally this is not in the fashion and not touched by regulators as well but yes in this area of the world this is a serious issue right you can read it please Now, some more points for your, dis as this is the first orientation, so it, you must know these things. X, SBR, these all are written, these points are written by the XBR examiner team. SBR examiner thinks about your skills at workplace. So listen, it's beyond technical knowledge because now a lot of technical work done by software and robotics. Yes, we all know that's the time of AI, artificial intelligence, right? Okay. So this is not about normal number crunching. It's all done by, you know, now there are accounting software. You just have to put numbers and they prepare everything auto, 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 right? Even they calculate your tax, they calculate your installments, everything, everything I'm telling you, right? Okay. Then, so they are, talk about the practical skills. They normally ask you, they don't ask you to prepare the financial statement but they will ask you to to guide the investors what is the meaning of this line what is the meaning of this line what is the meaning of this line right now normally in one question one part you can expect application of more than one standard yes so let me clear you this thing listen to me you know when i will start sbr course with you so first of all i'll just give you isifrs training isifrs training okay First of all, the basic training will be given. And I would recommend you to go fast with this basic training. Why? Because the real heart of the course is past papers. The real heart of the course is past paper. And I have covered in detail many past papers. All past paper, I, I would say. So, now the question is, sir, can't we do past paper right from the day one? No. Why? Because in normally in one question or one part, you will get two, three. You will be getting two three standards together for example there is a case of sale of inventory just after the year end so now this sale of inventory sale means ifrs 15 is there inventory means is2 is there and you have sold after the year end so is10 events after the reporting period is there so in one question they may touch two three four standards together right so that's why in the initial phase you cannot do the past papers now, this is very important. Whenever somebody asks me what will come in the exam, so I always say that ACCA is the real life exam. ACCA prepare you for the real life scenarios. So whatever is in fashion right now may come in, in your exams. 
So, you know, if you see the top 10, top five companies of the world right now, like Apple, Google, Amazon, so they all are IT based business. They all are, they all are highly linked to intangible assets. They are linked to intangible assets. So you may expect questions of intangible asset, also AI tools, and these all are intangible assets. So intangible assets are in fashion, in fashion. Okay. So like, see, so expectation of manufacturing company question is less likely technological questions are more likely, right? So research and development brands, customer social relationship, software, human capital, chat, GPT, AI, these things are in fashion, right? And you know, they you get the real life. One more tip I would like to give you, very important tip. Listen to me and hold it and listen to me. And the tip is, whenever you want to select any paper, like you want to give SBR paper, you want to select SBR paper now, always, 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 listen. First, always go and check the past papers. Even it is SBL, SBR, ATX, AAA, any paper. Always go and check the past papers. This will, this will give you a path. This will give you a slight vision that which paper you are, which on which path you have to move, right? Okay. So this make it your practice. Always check the past papers first. Similarly, now cryptocurrency is in fashion. So cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, these things may come in exam. Now, one more issue. Normally, you know, IAS, IFRS, IAS and IFRS, the first I, the word I means international. The word I means international, international. So obviously IFRS is for the whole world, but definitely International Accounting Standard Board cannot cover each and every issue of the world. International Financial Reporting Standard cannot cover each and every issue of the world. That's that's the right point. So, what they do, they can't cover each and every issue of the world. So that's why if you are if you are in the examination and you got a question on which there is no IS IFRS is directly applicable. So what you will do? What you will do, you will apply IS-8. You will, first of all, you will try to find in the IFRS book the treatment. If there is no direct IFRS is applied on that, then you have to go for similar treatment. Any similar accounting standard is there for that treatment. If no such similar, then you go for framework. Then you go for accounting framework, okay? Obviously, this issue I have discussed, I'm going to discuss many times while solving the past papers as well, but right now I'm also giving you an idea for that. Now, in SBR paper, there is an area, this I have already discussed, which you have to discuss investors and invest, investors just don't look at PNL and SOFP, but more it looks to business model. Yes, see, financial accounting is always for past. We all know this. Financial reporting is always for past. But you know, investor has invested in your shares. So investor is looking for future. Stock market runs with future. Yes, stock market is highly dependent on future expectation. So now this is this is a very constant thing in all over the world that only income statement, profit and loss, SOCI and SOFP are not enough for shareholders now. They need to know your business model, how you are generating money, how you are getting the success. This model should be disclosed. What's the plan of making money? See, I've written. Or intangibles of which may not. Yes. Listen. The existing IS38, which we all studied, they don't include internally generated goodwill. Internally generated goodwill are not capitalized. That means they are not presented in balance sheet, SOFP, and income statement. But yes, 
internally generated intangible asset is your biggest asset through which you get the customers the whole business is on your goodwill so yes the stock market values in the stock market share price in the stock market share price your goodwill is included but it is not included in your financial statement so just think it's a big gap it's a big gap so it may misguide the exam the investors so now it is your duty it is your duty to disclose all these things that's why there is a topic of management commentary there is a topic of what i call what we call integrated reporting in which you you report the holistic view of your business not just not just the pnl and sofp but other factors you also discuss like laws you know in in past years back when there was a donald trump time donald trump applied sanctions like trade barriers on with china so in us here in united states it was a big problem it was a big problem with many 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 importers because us imports a lot of things from china you know this thing so this may affect many businesses so you should disclose this similarly in past ukraine russia war happened so because of that war many businesses got affected like many american companies they just withdraw with they just withdrew themselves from you the russia like netflix previously netflix used to provide services in russia but they because of this war they stopped it so they lost millions of subscriber just think it's an effect similarly mcdonald's let me tell you one thing about mcdonald's you know in russia people are crazy on mcdonald's i have read one article let me tell you normally this is the business strategy of mcdonald when mcdonald goes in any country mcdonald adopts the taste of that country that like in pakistan india bangladesh we people eat spicy food so mcdonald launches spicy flavors in these countries that means mcdonald amend amend the food quality according to the country but you know in russia when mcdonald goes in russia or if you see the mcdonald outlets in russia they exact they are exact copy paste like in united states they didn't change the flavor and that's why it is said it is said listen my words in russia this is a very famous dialogue if you want to visit united states visit mcdonald if you want to visit united states go and visit mcdonald like that means there are big big outlets of mcdonald in russia like if you enter with one gate you need to go out with and it's so big you get, you can you can be lost it's such a, but see because of this war many organizations they withdrew so this is a effect on the business simple it's an it's an effect right so you need to disclose all these things now in question number 4 different accounting errors their correct treatment and impact of yes sometimes this question also come they gave you some errors in the accounts and now you need to correct those errors and after correcting those errors write their impact on the different ratios and do the commentary now professional marks although like now in sbl and other papers there are 20 professional marks in sbr it's very less it's very let's not 20 it's very less right so but still there are some professional marks now what how you get the professional marks with clarity and quality of discussion flow of sentences must be very good the layout must be very good in this way it's like it's like professional talk if somebody is talking in in the interview and they are using the layman words obviously obviously this is not the professional way so if whatever we adopt in real life for professionalism you have to apply here same one one more tip see proper headings give proper headings then sentence heading sentence heading sentence in this way do calculation on one sheet and practical working on the other sheet this is give proper references this is also increase your professional marks in past when in many years like 7 to 8 years or 10 years back we used to paper students used to give paper and paper and pen paper and pen but now it's typing so you know one of the reasons of failing the exams i have attended such exam technique sessions by acca uk
they used to say that poor layout and poor handwriting writing is the reason of failure. Although now there is no handwriting issue, it's all typing, but yes, again, the layout is there. So layout must be professional, okay? It should look good. This is the advice by examiner. Candidate should read real life journals, newspapers, publish companies to discuss things with respect to investors. Although <laughs> examiner has written this, advice but i'm sure like 99 percent students don't follow this to be very honest even they don't have time to cover the course right but it's better you read the technical articles it's better you read the technical articles from ACC website yes this is a recommended read a student account and there is the magazine now this is the theory base this is the technique which normally we follow during our examination uh, in sbr SAC, state the rule, apply the rule and conclusion. What is this? You know, when they will give you a practical case, first of all, you need to identify that this case is related to IS 37. Let us say this case is related to IAS 37's provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. So you need to write it. You need to write it. You need to write it. Okay. First, you need to write the standard that is called state the rule, write the rule. Then you have to do application. This is the heart. This is the heart of your exam. Okay. Then you need to do apply the rule, the application of that question. And finally, you write the conclusion. So in, if you approach, if you follow this approach, this is a very good approach. Read this, please. See, I have written one more advice here, even in the later studies, I'll also discuss in a state, the rule, like when you have to write the ISIFRS, only write the relevant thing. Don't write irrelevant data. Like example of IFRS 15, if question requires one component of stage five, just discuss that. Okay. You don't need to write the whole ISIFRS. Otherwise you won't be able to complete your course on uh, paper on time. Okay. Just the relevant data. Now this is a very famous and very big good news. In SBR, it is said, it is said, if you are right, you are right. Very famous dialogue. If you are right, you are right. And if you are wrong, still you may be right. If you have an argument, then you will get marks. What does it mean? It means you, the multiple solutions allowed, multiple solutions. Like if, because obviously this is a real life paper, technical things comes. So if you have interpreted a question wrong, like if your idea is wrong, your solution is wrong, but you are giving the logic, you are giving the rationale, you are giving the reason that why I have considered this is still you will get the marks. That means you know the rule, you know the game. This is how it works. Now, one more good news. There is a concept of headroom. I hope you remember that. I hope you guys know the meaning of headroom. There are few meanings of headroom. Listen, headroom means the first meaning of headroom is, for example, there is a question there's a question part A and it is written, it is 10 marks. So this 10 marks means it's the maximum marks. Okay. 10 marks you, you can get. But when examiner will start checking it, when the marker will start checking this question, marker will assume that this is a 14 mark question. Marker will assume that this is a 14 marks question. So if you have done mistakes of four marks, still you will get 10 marks. That means after doing mistakes, still you will get 100% marks. After doing mistakes, still you can get 100% marks. So this is a very good thing, headroom. And there is one more interpretation of headroom by some professionals of UK that multiple solutions are allowed. Multiple solution means if you are right, you are right. And if you are wrong, still you may be right if you have an argument. 
still you, if you have an argument okay right so i have discussed some things for your motivation this class was important for you that it it was giving you a direction so now this is my whatsapp number as well it's written and you guys know this as well so be active now take proper classes try to go fast in the start of the area like standards go fast and in the end there are a lot of past papers so give more time on past papers that's the heart of your paper okay and do avail the marking facility as well so it's time to sign off take care bye bye